Hey everyone, Andrigatz here and welcome back to my channel! In today's video we will deep dive into Season 3 Crafted Gear. We touched on it in the last gearing video, but today we are going to dig even deeper. Before we jump in though, hit the subscribe button if you like to see more of my content. Alright, let's get into it. Crafted Gear is still a force to be reckoned with in Season 3 despite a slight nerf. The max item level caps at 486, just 3 levels shy of the highest myth gear. But don't let that fool you it's still a solid choice. For starters, no RNG headaches here as crafting gear allows you to target specific slots and items, offering a strategic advantage to your gearing journey, so you can plan ahead and farm the reagents needed. Speaking of reagents, let's take them one by one and go over the changes this season brought. Each crafted gear piece requires an enchanted crest, crafted by enchanters through the work order system. Or if your main or al has enchanting, you are in a lot of luck, it can save you some gold there. Enchanted crest recipes are found in the Emerald Dream from outdoor activities like rares, treasures and the Super Bloom event. And the drop chance is quite high as well. Same as last season, we have three enchanted crests, the Whelpling, the Wyrm and the Aspect. The Whelpling Crest is utilized for lower level blue gear, providing an item level of up to 447. And although this is fairly low, considering it can drop from outdoor activities as well, it can prove very useful for solo players. And, you know, to alts. On the flip side, the Wyrman aspects are reserved for epic quality gear. This is the most powerful gear you can craft, but you also need another reagent for that. More on that in a bit. In 10.2, all crests go directly into the currency tab rather than your bags. Due to this change, an item had to be implemented to convert the crest into a reagent, allowing for easy transfer to the crafters. This is done by the nascent crest and there are three kinds of them, one for each type of crest. All can be purchased from the enchanting vendors throughout the Dragonfly zones, but the most convenient one is here in Valdragon, near the order system. For example, to craft the highest crest you need to purchase the nascent aspect by handing in 60 normal aspects. To put things in perspective, gathering this amount is equivalent to completing 5 level 16 keys in time or taking down around 6 mythic bosses. It does take some effort and time, but the high item level makes it worthwhile. Additionally, you can obtain a free enchanted Wyrm's crest through specific milestones. One is rewarded for defeating Firak as part of the main campaign, and that includes all the difficulties, while the other is granted upon reaching Renown 20 with Dream Wardens. For those interested in maximizing their reputation efficiently, I've also created a guide on my channel to help you through the process. So far, we have covered the enchanted crests. Now, the second reagent that you have to provide for high items is the Spark of Dreams. This item is basically replacing the old sparks that we had in Season 1 and 2. You can create it by combining two splinter sparks of dream and 250 fly stones. And there are two known ways to earn a half spark. The first way is by completing the worthy ally weekly quest in Amidrasil offered by the Renown Keeper, and it requests farming 1500 reputation with Dream Wardens. The second way is by completing any of these two quests offered by Malisha for PvP players. You can find her in the Valdragon's PvP hub. As you might anticipate, you can generate a spark by weekly, by receiving one half spark per week. However, there is a unique opportunity to earn an extra spark through the one-time quest Dream Unified offered by Lady Moonberry. So upon completion you'll have two sparks, but keep in mind this occurs just once per character. If you join in later in the patch, no need to fret, there's a catch-up mechanism in place. Splinter sparks can be obtained from raids, dungeons, PvP and weekly activities until you reach the current spark count. Alright, since we pretty much covered all the universal reagents across crafted pieces, let's see how it works in practice. Firstly, you need to reach out to an enchanter, open a work order for your chosen enchanted crest and find a crafter for your desired gear piece. Consider the cost, quality and reagents needed. Many people in trade chat or your guild can help, so don't be shy. Besides the spark and the crest, the other reagents vary depending on the item and it's not necessary to provide them yourself. The crafter can also contribute, but take that into consideration for the payment. The quality of the reagents is also very important as it can help to make it 5 star. The ingredients can be gathered throughout farming or you can purchase them directly from the auction house. So the consistent reagents are the spark and the enchanted crest and this will determine the final item level. If you provide only the spark then it will be 450 to 463 depending on its overall quality. But it's best to save your spark and enhance the piece further by incorporating crests. 
The Worms Crest elevates it from 463 to 476, while the Aspex Crest achieves levels from 473 to 486, so that's very, very powerful. Keep in mind that crafting weapons requires two sparks instead of one, translating to approximately a month's effort. So it's very, very crucial to be strategic about the items you choose to craft, considering the sparks don't come in as quickly. Aside from that, crests also do have a weekly cap of 90 per week, which of course keeps increasing every week. A good approach is to take notes from the best in slow gear guide for your class and spec. Don't forget that you can also add missives for your preferred stats and embellishments for some extra flair, providing fun effects on the piece. Some items come with built-in embellishments such as the lariat and are so totally worth a look. All in all, embellishments give a powerful touch to the gear and you should always utilize them. But you cannot go harm, as you can only equip two at a time. Also keep in mind that if you've got any crafted gear from season 1 or 2 lying around, you can give it a refresh by adding the new reagents. Plus, it might even save you a bit of gold, especially if you reach out to the same crafter. That's all good and well for the PvE players. Now let's uh, go over to the PvP side. Honor and Conquest vendors offer items that let you convert the professional crafted gear into PvP. You can find them both in the Valdragon's PvP hub. There are three Crests of Honor which will increase specific slot items to 476 PvP item level. They are sold by Siltherex and they cost different amounts of Honor depending on what slot you want to use them for. Honor is obtained from doing all types of PvP activities ranked or unranked. And for the advanced players we have three Trophies of Conquest which will increase the gear's level to 489. These are sold by Calderax and they cost different amounts of Conquest, again depending on the slot item. Conquest is only earned from rated PvP activities and it has a weekly cap. Season 3 started with a 1350 limit and it keeps increasing by 550 every week. Don't forget that the PvP item level is only enabled during arenas and battleground matches. In the outer world then it's the actual item level on the piece. And that's pretty much all guys, crafting your perfect gear takes time and effort, but the rewards are so much worth it. I truly hope you found this video insightful in understanding how crafted gear works. I was trying to make it clear and easy to follow, even for players who are diving into Dragonfly for the first time. But if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching my content and please make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. You can also find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash undercutsgames where I'm mostly streaming World of Warcraft. Good luck with whatever you are doing and I will see you all on the next one. Bye!